Hello everyone and welcome back to Rachel's studio where the focus is loose yet realistic watercolor animals. In today's tutorial we're going to focus on painting this cute little piggy. It's going to be fast, easy, and fun. With the emphasis on fun, we're not going to take it too seriously. We're going to embrace our mistakes and realize that when you make mistakes that's when you really learn the most. Thank you so much to Jerry Mikolas on Pexels.com for this beautiful muse. And if you would like the line drawing and reference photo for this guy, you can access him by joining my Patreon, where I also share about 60 to 70 other tutorials. And depending on what tier you join, you can get hours and hours of real time start to finish tutorials of lots of different subjects. So let's go ahead and get started. I um, continue to have issues with my Arsh cold press watercolor paper. So on this painting, I'm using my Hannah Mule watercolor paper. I'm also redoing another painting of a woman I'm doing for my Patreon students. I painted her on Arsh paper and I had sizing issues and I've had so many sizing issues over the last two years. So I decided to repaint her on Hannah Mule and here's how she's looking, but that will be available to my Patreon students as well. But let's go ahead and get started on this sweet little piggy and the colors that I'm going to use include M. Graham Naphthol Red, Holbein Oriolan, Windsor Violet, and French Ultramarine, and Daniel Smith Lamp Black. Now if you don't have my exact colors, do not worry. The important part of painting is to get the values right. So worry more about getting your darks dark, your mediums mediums, and your lights lights. And the paint color you use is a lot, lot less important. So here I'm just painting with about tea consistency. By the way, if you're not sure what I mean when I say tea, milk, cream consistency, be sure to check out my video that I made about that subject and I'll link that here. It's in my whole playlist of watercolor basics. And here I'm painting on dry paper, which is also kind of a new approach for me. I normally get everything wet and then drop color in but I've been playing recently with painting on dry paper. And I'm using my Silver Black Velvet Size 8 Round, my very, very favorite brush. And my new favorite brush you'll see here a little bit later is my Princeton Aqua Elite for Long. And here I'm being careful to paint negatively around the light highlights of the nose wrinkles because I really want to save those light areas. And I'll put a mark and then I go in with clear water and kind of blend it. So when you see me put a darker mark and then I go in and kind of blend it out, I'm doing that with a cleaned out brush that has a couple drips of water in it. Also stay tuned to the end because I'm going to talk about a mind-blowing new thing that I learned about uh, painting backgrounds and incorporating your subject into the background. So I'm going to talk about that later and I'm so excited to share that with you all, but we'll talk about that when I paint the background in around this little guy. So I mix my naphthol red with a little bit of blue. I very rarely use pure color when I'm painting because it's just too glaring and it doesn't look natural, especially when you're painting animals. Notice how I wipe my brush off on the side of the jar to get the excess water off. You don't, you really want a super drippy brush. You usually want somewhere in the milk consistency range. And here I'm mixing my naphthol red and my Oriolan about milk consistency. And I'm going to put these colors into the nose. And I'm wiping off my brush and going in with just a clean, damp brush to blend what I just put in. And that kind of gives you a little gradient from darker to the, at the top of the nose to lighter. But then I just drop in some of that pure M. Graham naphthol red and it just explodes. And that's one of the characteristics of that paint. It just diffuses beautifully. So it does explode on the paper when you put it in somewhere. So just know that's going to happen. Then I'm making the bottom of the nose a little cooler with some purple. 
And I did want that nose to be kind of almost neon colored where the light's hitting it just because the nose I think is so adorable. It's the cutest part of the pig. So I did want some of my brightest color and notice also my highlights that I left over the top of the bridge of his nose is white. So that also will help the viewer know, oh, go look at this nose. There's a lot of interesting things going on. And this is a purple, just a mix of ultramarine, French ultramarine, and a little bit of red. And then I put some pure blue in. Just, you very rarely want one flat color in an area. You might want one flat value, all medium in here, but it'll look a lot better if you use at least two colors. So I try to remember to do that. And then I use more water down here as the uh, leg goes out into some light, it gets lighter. Getting some pure M. Graham Napthal red there. Just put a little splash of it there for a little bit of wow factor. By the way, this is my second time painting this piggy. My first one, my camera went all blurry. And now I'm glad I redid it again because it's just working better for whatever reason. So don't be afraid to paint something more than once because you'll almost always improve. Now I'm just putting in that pink pig color um, and it's naphthol red with a little bit of uh, ultramarine mixed in just a little bit and it's not technical. I mean you can make it a little pinker, you can make it a little bluer and I'm just kind of getting an underpainting done here on his stomach area. Some tea consistency paint. Now I'm going towards more milk consistency to get a little bit darker here. That back leg is a lot darker because it's in shadow. So you can go pretty bold with milk consistency, purple, red, blue <laughs> mix in there. And that'll look good. As long as your values are darker as compared to the upper part of the pig's body, the color doesn't matter as much, like I said. I painted this, the first time I painted this pig, for example, that back leg was a little bit more blue. And one thing that is really good if you can do it is attach the shadow to the animal and so while this back leg is wet, I'm attaching the shadow to that back leg. His other leg is up in space. It's not touching the, the ground, so I'm not going to have the shadow touch that foot, I don't think. But I wanted that shadow and that back foot to kind of merge together. Using very watery wash up here on the back side. That's my M. Graham Napthal Red. I use very limited palette usually when I paint. You don't need a lot of colors. You just need a few good, really, really good colors. And M. Graham Napthal Red is really good because it mixes with both blue and yellow beautifully. Holbein Oriolan is really good because it mixes with the other two primaries very well. And French Ultramarine is just such a classic. Here on this back foot, it's not an important foot, but I wanted to have a little bit of an interesting shape to it. So I'm not uh, painting exactly every little detail in that back foot, just uh, the shadows and I left it completely white. I just thought that made it look interesting. And then on this front left leg, I've got naphthol red mixed with a little blue. Or you could use cobalt would be gorgeous in this painting too. Thallow blue is the only one I don't recommend because it's so hard to control. You see, I touched my painting to see if it was still 
damp because I want to put these spots on, but I want them to kind of diffuse out so they have soft boundaries, like a spot on a pig would. And my paper is almost too wet there. It almost blooms out too much, but I'm okay with that. And here, my paper's a little drier. And there's a really dry spot there too, but I kind of like that effect. And that's really dry right there on dry paper. So um, just don't paint these dark black spots with, and by the way, use cream consistency lamp black. And your paper needs to be like half dry, so they bloom out a little bit, but not uncontrollably. So they stay spots and not big blobs that go across the whole pig. That one up on his rump is almost too wet. Okay, here's my new Princeton Aqua Elite 4 Long. This brush was about $8. It's synthetic, so it doesn't hold a lot of water. But that actually makes it great for doing tiny little details because it's hard to get too much water in your brush with this brush. It has a great point and I love the tiny, tiny little details I can get. So I am painting negatively around the eyelashes of this pig. So if you decide to do it this way, go really slow or you could choose to use masking to mask out those cute little eyelashes. I made my eye a little bit bigger and rounder just to give it more cutie, cutesy appeal. Maybe some milk. Actually, that's tea consistency to put that shadow under his eye. Now I'm just mixing an orange with my whole binoriolan and my M. Graham Naphthal Red. When I paint this ear, I paint negatively along the fuzzies coming off his forehead. So just notice how I do that. And I don't paint the whole ear. There's just a little bit of um, red or orange color closer to his head. Blot a little to get more of a gradient from dark to light. And then I put some more thick paint right down at the bottom. So it's darker down at the bottom of the base of the ear. Now I'm basically just getting this ear wet. Along the edges and then down into that little V where it goes deep into his ear. And then I leave a little triangle of pure white dry paper so that I have more control over that area. And then put pure M. Graham Naphthal Red to denote the deepest part of his ear. And look how it just blooms out, it's so pretty. And I'm just pulling some of that paint out into the ear. And then blending with a damp, clean brush over here. So there I'm painting onto moist paper with some cream consistency orange. I'm making it a little thicker there around the edge. Another good thing to try to notice is the shadow shapes. I do have a whole video about shadow shapes and how to paint them and how 
to look at the shadow shapes instead of the actual anatomy architecture. And here there was a shadow shape that went from his ear all along his jaw. So I was painting that. Then I'm using quite a grayed down kind of reddish brown there. And you just get a reddish brown by kind of mixing all three primaries together and make it heavy on the red. And then it's uh, going to be a more gray red. So just kind of trying to mimic the color in the reference photo there. Now I'm going to deepen some of that color in that nose. Now I'm soaking up some color out of the top to make it lighter along the top. I'm re-wetting this area because I want to put that black spot above his eye. So I'm putting clean, clear water in there and just kind of spreading it around be way beyond the boundaries where I want the black spot to be and then picking a little bit up with some paper towel so I don't have to wait for it to dry. And then getting some cream consistency, lamp black. And I put a few little dots just to see how much they're going to bloom. And they weren't blooming a ton, so I went ahead and just put it in. He had a few little long feathery furs over his eye. I was trying to paint negatively around them a little bit. And I do try to put more detail around the eyes, so I do put more information for the viewer there. You know, I'm kind of softening up some of those edges with a damp, clean brush. And just softening some of those edges. Trying to leave a little sliver of white along his lower eyeliner. Darkening that little cute smile that's important. some red leaning tea consistency to darken the um, nose wrinkles because those are really important they're so adorable it's French ultramarine getting quite a good bit of French ultramarine there I'm going to put in the shadow. So I'm using Milk Consistency, French Ultramarine. And that really helps tell the story of that one left front leg by painting around it. And that contrast between the shadow and the leg looks really good. Didn't mean to get that much red, <laughs> but you don't want a flat shadow that's just one color, that blue. So I mix quite a bit more red in to get it more purple. And I would love to have it a little bit more red than that, but what do you do? 
There, I'm dropping in some pure red. This leg is in shadow, and in the reference, it's a lot darker. So, I'm this is the point in the painting where you start balancing out your values and look at them in relation to each other. And this leg back here was really dark, so I wanted to add some value to it. I'm using kind of a bluish red. You could use, use a pure blue. You could use a blue mixed with a little black. Any of those would work. Just get that cute little tail in. Just adding a few of the shadows that are but that kind of delineate the legs and the shoulders using just a bluish red mix milk consistency on dry paper Definitely want that mouth really dark because it's an important detail. So I'm mixing a blue, red, yellow, kind of trying to get a dark blue color. Putting in the nostrils. And my nose was a little wet, so my nostril ran into my little wet area there. Which I don't know if it looks bad or not, but that was kind of a mistake. But we're embracing mistakes, right? <laughs> so if I really wanted to, I could scrub some of that back out after it dries. All right. The next part of this painting process is the background. This is my favorite thing that I've been playing with. It's my newest bit of knowledge that I'm really excited about. And it came to me via Tom Shepard's YouTube channel. And he does beautiful loose animals. If you're here and you like animals, you, you will definitely enjoy his channel. And he was talking about how he was reading a book by James Gurney, who has um, a book about uh, painting realism, but it's like fantasy realism. And he talks about connecting your main subject to the background by using different value pairings between the background and the foreground subject. For example, right here, there is a white highlight on the top of the forehead and so I'm putting in a dark background to really pop that out and the white of the ear is abutting the dark blue background that I'm painting here with my French ultramarine Then as we go down to the nostril area, which is a dark blue on the pig's nostril area or cheek area, maybe I'm going to let uh, there be a medium abutting a medium. So a different pairing, a medium abutting a medium as opposed to a medium against a white or a dark against a light. And then here I'm doing light against light. And so I'm making a variety of pairings happen as we move around the animal. And that kind of attaches your animal into the painting. Just kind of like how I always talk to you guys about having soft edges and hard edges. A new way for me to think about it is think more in terms of lights mediums and darks and combinations of those and have it making sure you have all those combinations in your painting dark against light light against dark 
dark against dark, medium against medium, light against light. Have all of those um, pairings in each painting if you can. It's not hard and fast, but you can see when I add this background and have all these different variety of pairings, it really looks good. I mean, it really makes takes this painting to another level to have these pairings so I am forever grateful to both Tom Shepard for introducing me to James Gurney, who also has a wonderful blog, and he has a blog post on this windmill principle. And uh, in fact, his example is Rembrandt's windmill, and the blades of the windmill are light, medium, and dark against light, medium, dark parts of the sky behind it. So that is just one example of one of the posts I made to my Patreon students. So um, you don't, not only do you get uh, tutorials or just get to watch over my shoulder kind of as I paint on my Patreon, every once in a while I make a post, especially when I learn some new bit of knowledge that really takes my painting to the next level. I share all of my discoveries with my Patreon students as they unfold in my painting journey. And it's really fun to share that way because my students share with me as well and we all learn from each other. It's a great community. So I'd love for you to come and check that out. And Tombow Fudnesuke pen is great for signing. And I'm going to put a few little pops of dark shadow right under the hooves with this Tombow calligraphy pen. And just darken a few of the most dark darks with it. And I can toy with a painting like this for another hour. just drawing everything you do want think in terms of when you let your paint dry you're setting the colors and then if you want to paint anything on top of that you need to have everything completely dry now if you've got masking in your painting be careful not to get the masking too hot with the hair dryer because it will it, it might set it into the paper 
All right, now I've got this little micro pen, micron pen. I forget which brand it is. I'll have to look it up. But see, I'm doing some scribbling along these edges where there's a white background against a white edge of the pig. I'm putting some pops of red on that nose to really help the viewer realize that's a good place to look. And then I put a really strong bit of red there and then I was like, that's too strong. So I went and, and uh, cleaned out my brush and now I'm just kind of softening that with a clean damp brush now. Here I'm using my calligraphy pen to put in the eye there, the other eye. Thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial. I would love for you to subscribe if you're interested in painting loose painterly animals. That's where I'm wanting my art to go. Taking all my Patreon students and my YouTube members who both get the same thing by the way, so don't sign up for both of those um, on this similar journey. So I'd love for you to join me there. Now go watercolor your world. Bye everybody.